Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of My Boyfriend Sews. This is Eric, and today what are we going to be making? We're gonna be making this pouch for my stick shift card. He's not touching the metal. Oh my god, this is freaking hot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, I gotta get one of these. Oh my goodness. So this is Eric's shift knob, and it's already really hot right now to touch yeah, because really hot, man. It's metal. So, so he just wants to make a little cover like this to go over it. This is a drawstring pouch, but we're gonna turn it upside down like this so it can cover the shift knob. This project is also going to double up as a coin pouch, a drawstring coin pouch. So he's going to be learning two techniques in this video, how to sew elastic and how to create a drawstring casing. Here are the materials we'll be using for the shift knob cover some fabric of your choice, and a quarter inch elastic. We have two of these cloths that I got from Daiso. I personally think that the material is too thin and it's kind of transparent for a coin pouch and a cover, but he really likes it, so we're yeah, just gonna like go that. ahead and use it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're using this tiny bag as our pattern, and the dimensions are three and a half by three and a half inches. If your fabric has a cool print on it, decide what images you want on the bag, and then draw your three and a half by three and a half square. The see-through rulers are really helpful because then now you can see the purple line continue underneath. We have our half inch seam allowance along the sides in the top, our one inch seam allowance along the bottom. Now we just have to cut it out. Fold the fabric so you can cut out two squares at once unless you want a certain print placement on the other side. So next he's going to face both of them right sides together. That's the wrong sides together. <laughs> oh. And the reason why you want it right sides together is because when you sew it and you turn it right sides out, then the seams are on the inside. If you're not sure where the measurements are on your machine, draw in your seam lines and sew right on top of that line. And when working with multiple layers, use a couple clips or pins to hold them together. Does it matter which side I go first? Since we want this side to be open, he should start on this side that way he can continue a so here turn it so here turn it and end up you don't want to push the fabric in the machine has the feed dogs on the bottom and it's going to already be pulling the fabric kind of just hold it in place like guide it so that it's straight but don't push it through okay. And then, yeah, nice. Use that hand wheel. <laughs> when you get really close to the corner, you guys, use the hand wheel. It's gonna make sure you guys are precise and you get right on top of that okay, I'm corner. On top of it. So now that he's on top of the corner, what is the next step? I have to pull the um, presser foot up. Oh, yeah, Lift correct. But then the needle's still in, so I have to bring the needle out. Nope. We want the needle in because it's going to make sure that oh, the fabric okay. doesn't move out of place while we're and then sewing. I rotate it this way, and then it will do it for me. No, it's not. You have to guide it oh. still. Wait, did you even backstitch earlier? Mm -mm. Oh man, you should have backstitched. This but. one, right? So someone asked me in the first episode why you need to backstitch. You need to backstitch when you start sewing and when you end sewing, so that the thread doesn't unravel on you. No, keep going. So when he gets all the way to the end, he needs to backstitch. After the three sides are sewn, we clean up the edges with a pinking rotary blade to stop it from fraying. So because he didn't backstitch on one of the ends, this is why you need to because this side he did backstitch. Oh no, see, this side he didn't backstitch. This entire thing can just unravel now. So now he has to go back and sew over that. Make sure you backstitch right here when you start and over here when you end. This thing will be going over it so he's not touching the metal oh my god this is freaking hot yeah, that's what i'm saying i gotta get one of oh these my things. goodness we kind of want it to hug right here so i would say like an inch the fabric is really thin so you can still kind of feel the heat the heat we decided to add a lining layer since you can still feel the heat from the metal knob and to do that you just repeat the same steps from earlier to make a second bag so Eric just finished sewing the the lining piece and he yeah. forgot to face it right sides together. This is what happens. 
he has two. This one is going to be the lining, so you don't have to flip it right sides out. But this one will have to be turned inside out. To make sure those corners are sharp, you can clip the corners before turning it right sides out. But make sure to not clip too close to the seam because you might cut the thread and create a hole. You can also use a point turner. Now, since this is going to be the lining, we're just going to slide it inside of this one. Okay, so now that he has the lining inside, you see why we put it in that way? Is because when you look inside now, the edges will be nice and clean. The next technique Eric's gonna learn how to do is sewing a basting stitch. A basting stitch is just the longest stitch length on your machine. On my machine, it's five. Push that up. To five. All the way until it's... Sew a basting stitch along the edge to hold the two layers together. As you sew, rotate the bag around so you don't sew over any folds and make sure that the two layers are still stacked on top of each other because sometimes the layer underneath will move which is why it's important to pin or clip the fabric. Alright, there is the basting stitch sewn all the way around. We're just using it to temporarily hold the two pieces together. Next, fold the raw edges over to the wrong side of the bag and we're folding it kind of big because we forgot to trim away the extra seam allowance before basting so we're just going to leave it at one inch for now. Use the elastic to measure how wide the casing needs to be. The elastic we're using is a quarter inch so we sewed it at 3 eighths of an inch from the fold. Mark 3 eighths along the bottom and sew around the bag but make sure to stop one inch before you reach the end because we need an opening to slide the elastic through. Cut 4 inches of elastic and use a safety pin to help guide it through the casing. Once the safety pin comes out the other side, overlap the two ends together and zigzag them in place. This was a little challenging because the bag was so small, so before sewing, I suggest you put the needle down through both layers of elastic first so they stay in place. Lastly, stretch and sew the opening closed. Here is the finished shift knob cover for Eric's car. right here to go over his shift knob. It is a beginner's project but because uh, we decided to add a lining, it got a little more, got complicated. A little more complicated. Yeah. And because of the size, it's so tiny, it makes it that much more difficult yeah. to feed it underneath the presser foot and yeah. the machine. I like it. It fits perfectly. It fits a flush with just the knob. So I know. I'm happy with it. Yeah, because good yeah. thing we took it to his car and uh -huh. before we did trim the seam allowance and added the elastic, we made sure it was just enough because I didn't want it to be too big and baggy. I just wanted to hug right around the yeah, knob the on knob the top. Of it. Yep. But unfortunately, this since this video became longer than we yeah. wanted it to be, we're not going to show you guys the coin pouch in this one and we'll probably save that for another episode. Yep. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next Thanks, episode. Bye-bye.